please welcome Jason Payne. This question was posed yesterday morning. Can we use technology to expose, map, and disrupt illicit networks? Well, of course, the answer to this question is yes. However, as a data scientist, I have one important caveat that I'd like to add to this, that the efficiency with which technology can be used to disrupt illicit networks is directly dependent on the quality of the data to which that technology is applied. To put that another way, many data-driven organizations today kneecap their analysts with low quality data. So I'd like to give you an example of this. To do that, I'm actually going to step away from illicit networks. And furthermore, I'm going to step back in time 70 years to look at data from World War II. So what I'm looking at here are two very similar data sources. On the left, I have the US Navy's daily chronology of World War II. And on the right, I have the US armies. They're very similar in nature. They both, on a daily report, discuss granular details about a unit as well as a ship that was involved, the location of those events, et cetera. However, there's a subtle difference or two in the US Navy data that makes it much easier to efficiently work with this data. That is two things. First, that there are unique identifiers of every single ship and secondly, that there are geographic coordinates of this information. So to look at this via technology, I have that same document, as well as the same Navy's document. But what we've been able to do is automatically extract those geographic locations, uh, those ships, et cetera. So I can simply throw this document on a map to see where this information is coming from. So to put this in the notion of a workflow, if I want to add all of the documents that reference Okinawa here, I see that I have 164 Navy documents relevant to Okinawa and about 100 Army documents. Throwing these on the map, I can see the locations referenced in all of those Navy documents. Furthermore, I have the time series, and I can simply easily step through and see when and where any significant action related to this conflict is. So again, it's very efficient and very easy for me with this data to be able to draw actionable insights from the information. Furthermore, I can actually look at the network involved here. So as I mentioned, we also have unique identifiers of ships. So here I can see uh, the network of each ship that's involved, along with the document around it, et cetera. So I want to look at, say, the battleships, and actually see ship by ship every geotemporal location of when and where that ship was and what conflict they were involved in World War II. So as I mentioned, this is a talk about efficiency. So without a doubt, I can draw those same conclusions from the Army data. You know, I have locations, I have units, I have all that information available to me. It just takes a sort of manual process to be able to unify that data together, to be able to you know, build out the networks of the divisions, the units, the companies, the battalions, et cetera. Um, you know, to, to sort of demonstrate a way that I can do that is if I look at you know, the 5,000 Army documents, and then I say I want to look at the theater, and if, say, for example, I wanted to look at Libya, here I have the timeline or the time series of the 90 documents that are relevant to Libya, and I can make that manual process or that manual pass across it. So again, I can draw those same actionable insights that I just showed you with the Navy documents, just not in as an efficient of a manner. So with that being said, you know, why did I step away from illicit networks, and why did I go back 70 years? Well, the point is, in 1940, when the US Navy started collecting this data, in their wildest dreams, the concept of big data would be beyond them. You know, the technology that we've built in the subsequent almost century would not be imaginable to those people. 
Looking forward, I think that 70 years from now, the technology that's used to disrupt illicit networks, or even seven years from now, is going to be beyond our wildest dreams. But what I do know is that the quality of the data that we're generating today will directly affect the quality and the efficiency to which that technology can be used to solve problems such as illicit networks. Thank you.